What is up guys, it is Bucky, and welcome to your 26th, uh, I was gonna say Objective-C, but this is actually an intermediate Java tutorial. I've been doing Objective-C for like the last month, so anyways, welcome to your 26th intermediate Java tutorial, and in this tutorial we're gonna be learning about threads. Now, if you watch any of my game tutorials, you know that I already taught you guys a little bit about threads, but now we're gonna be really getting in depth. And aside from that, before I even begin, I want to show you guys something you might be interested about. If you go to my new blog right here, uh, the new Boston Code .blogspot .com, it's a new blog I made today. You will see all of the source code, not only for this tutorial, but every tutorial I'm going to make from here on out, I'm going to put the source code right here. And again, the new Boston Code .blogspot .com. And if you're too lazy to type that in, just go ahead to my other blog and then you can see a link to that right here on my tutorials source code or if you are at my YouTube channel good thing I have like the smallest browser in the window well if you're in my YouTube channel go ahead and go to my blog and then there's a link to this blog but anyways uh, that's enough of that let's get to the tutorial so actually I'm just gonna put a link to this right in my description box why don't I do that and save you guys confusion yeah that's what I'm gonna do so if you're saying alright let's get to this thread stuff what is a thread what a thread is is it's a way your computer allows you to do multiple things at once so for example the video you're watching right now remember the old days where you had to download a video and wait for the whole thing to download and then once it was downloaded then you can watch it like F that no way we want to start this video buffering and as soon as we get a little bit of data in it that's when we start watching it and it actually loads as we're watching it and we can watch it before the whole thing is loaded so if you see the little progress bar at the bottom moving um, you know that you can watch a video before it's completely loaded so loading and watching those are two different things doing it at the same time that's the power of threads so again instead of doing one thing over then waiting for it then going to the next thing and next thing step by step we're doing many things all at the same time pretty cool huh so I'll be going into this a little bit later and if you need a better explanation go to my Java game development tutorial 1 and 2 and I explain it more in detail but now we really just want to get into the coding so you know enough of me talking let's go ahead and do this so in order to create a thread the first thing that we need to do is implement the interface runnable now runnable right here contains one method and one method only we need to use in it and that's the run method now whatever we put in this run method is the code that's going to run whenever we start our thread so in this tutorial we're going to be building three separate objects each of those objects we're going to put on a separate thread so we're going to have three threads we're going to run them all at once and see what happens pretty cool huh so let's go ahead and each of our objects which is also going to be on its own thread is going to have a string name and int time and random r equals new random just because we want to give it a random time now we're saying alright not minus that's what we're gonna say first gotcha um, I imported random from Java util so you know we don't have to make a separate class for that that's a built-in class pretty cool eh so now what do we want to do for the constructor um, public tuna or whatever you name your class I first want to give each object a name whenever I create it so I'm going to pass in a variable later on to give it a name so that name is set to your parameter and I also want to give it a time to sleep now whenever you put a thread to sleep it pretty much means do nothing just sit there chill out hang on wait for something else to happen so we can give it like a time manually like 50 milliseconds but we want to give it a random time because you know we can so r from our random object right here dot next int and as a parameter for this you write 999 and this is milliseconds so now um your random time is anywhere between zero in 999 milliseconds which is pretty much between zero and one second I mean close enough right 
All right, so outside of your constructor, now we're still doing, getting this one error and it says, dude, you implemented a runnable. When are you going to make this run method? All right, we'll do it right now. So put public void run. And it doesn't need anything in its uh, parameter. And go ahead, it does need a try and catch those. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Try, catch. exception e and we don't need to do anything for exception but anyways whatever you put in try remember this run method gets called whenever you start the thread so whenever you start the thread this is the code that's actually going to happen this is your sweet spot right here so let's go ahead and what do we want to actually do system out printf and let's go ahead and press for the format let's go ahead and and press percent s is sleeping for percent d so we're gonna say the name is sleeping and then we're gonna say how long it's sleeping for and after this we actually need to put our thread to sleep so in order to put thread to sleep put thread dot sleep and you don't need to name what thread you're putting to sleep because whenever you call run it automatically knows that thread it's kind of like self keyword so looks good right there and we also need to put time in here as a sleep parameter you put how long do you want to sleep for I mean you could put something like 40 or 12 seconds like that actually it would be that but what we're going to be doing is giving it that random time to sleep for so that's why that came in handy and after this we just want to do system out printf one more statement to make sure everything went well maybe you should put out instead of R that would probably help you know just a little bit and let's just go ahead and put alright Haas percent s is done and for the parameter just put name so I know this might not make any sense at all but um, in the next tutorial, when I put all of this together, you'll actually see how to implement threads. And I'll be going over it one last time to tie it all together and so it makes sense to you. So stick around for the next tutorial, and I will uh, see you then.